Hi there. I'm Richard Watts, one of the directors at People Make It Work. We're a collective of about 65 cultural workers uh, with a collective mission to support the cultural sector to change, develop and transform. And when we think about the ways in which we're helping the cultural sector, by that I suppose we mean individuals, groups, movements, organisations, one of the main ways that we can do that is um, through uh, supporting them with business skills in all their variety. I think about business skills as the things that enable our creative impact and see the lack of them as creating barriers, making things harder and draining our energy from what we really want to be doing, you know, helping everyone's culture get created. So some people might think about business skills as being kind of reductive and controlling, that it's about corporate sheen, it's about the sort of tyranny of the spreadsheet, the plan, or that it kind of, in some ways, reduces our authenticity as creative people. But I want to suggest that it serves us to see it differently. So what if business skills is really about enabling access to your artistry? enabling you to make more and better work, growing influence on others, ensuring that your voice is heard. What if business skills is about bolstering confidence, feeling better about your work, closing gaps that prevent you from getting opportunities, getting more of the work you want? What about if business skills is about translating and speaking across boundaries so you're being understood and understanding others better? What if it's about understanding process and, you know, really getting underneath the parameters that the people that are buying your services are really working within? What if it's about revealing truths and patterns in your own work and practice, understanding the business dynamics and data that sits behind your own work? So it feels to me like movement directors don't want to feel like Alan Sugar. But they might want to understand how the budget's been developed, about the underspend, and how they might be able to maximise that. Makers don't want to feel like Unilever, but they might want to understand their core costs of production, including R&D, um, the other input costs, their learning, their materials, so that they can feel confident about exactly what it's taken to deliver the work that they're making. Facilitators and coaches don't want to be like chief negotiators, but they might want to appreciate the value they create for a client as opposed to the cost of their time. So they can, you know, really arrive at a mutually beneficial price. There might be, there probably is, more you can do to develop your artistry. But that's going to come a, sort of within the laws of diminishing returns, isn't it? You know, if your artistic acumen, if you like, is already like eight out of 10, but your business acumen is only maybe four out of 10, what will give you the most benefit? What will make the most difference? Boosting your business skills and multiplier, enabling you to realize your creative ambitions. So do have a look around these learning resources. Keep being amazing. Good luck and enjoy the journey.